Good morning. Welcome to live stream service from the Southport Christian Center in National City. We're so glad you've come today. I trust you've had a blessed week enjoying the presence of the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. Amen? Amen. We walk in yes. victory because of that. So glad that you're here to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Open your heart to receive everything he has for you. Whatever is struggling, whatever burden, whatever need you have, just bring it to his feet. He is able and he's ready to receive. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the privilege we have of knowing you, loving you, and serving you. We rejoice in your presence today. We offer you our praise and worship and ask that you will receive it, Lord, and be honored and glorified. Meet every need, Lord, of those present and those listening in. Lift every burden from every heart, Lord. May we realize that we have come into your presence where there is adequate supply for every need. We thank you for that. And I'll give this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's join Pastor Rick and the team as they lead us in worship. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on, let's stand together. Amen. We can stand together and let's begin this worshiping the Lord right even now where we're at. If you're sitting there at home, stand to your feet. Just begin lifting your hands to the Lord and just begin worshiping Him even now. And Lord, I just worship you. I give you praise. You know, the Lord is amazing. God is just amazing. His love for us is amazing. Do you know how much He loves you? Do you know how much God and loves you? Here's, here's the simple thing. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are you a whoever this morning? Is that part of you? Whoever? Whomever? I'm a whomever. Are you a whomever? Amen. Amen. If you're a whomever, just lift your hand with me right now. I'm a whomever. Amen. I believe in him. I believe that Jesus came and died for my sins. Amen? Amen. He is a great God. He is, there is nobody like him. Amen? Amen. Who is like unto our God? No one. Amen. Come on. Who is like unto our God? Amen. Come on. we got to sing it out today. What is this love that won't breathe? It's calling out in heaven.
Jesus, you know me. 
praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We'd like to share this song with you. If you could just imagine for a moment, if everything that God created suddenly could speak, suddenly could cry out, suddenly could recognize who Christ is. This song really talks about it, kind of, it kind of mentions that, kind of, it kind of goes in there, but it says, Christ be magnified. I think all of creation would say, Christ be magnified. The trees would say, Christ be magnified. The rocks would cry out, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified. And we need Christ to be magnified in us. Amen. We need to, when we're, when we're, as we're walking around, as we're sharing love with one another, let Christ's love come out of us. That magnifies Him. So let that be our prayer today. Christ, be magnified in me. Amen.
If you have not picked up school children, supplies for school, see Christina after the service. Kathy Hubbard in Washington, our partner there, has made wonderful provision. And so if you have any need in that area, see Christine. Also, um, Lily and Steve have made available some firewood in their yard. And um, for, what you need for camping or for winter, it's a wonderful supply. See them may want to help you get that. We're going to go to the study of God's Word in a moment, get your Bibles, and let's prepare for that. It's been a wonderful time in the Lord's presence, amen? Amen. Yes. Today I want to talk to you some more about the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. In the past few weeks, we have studied that gift and looked at it to see what God has given us. Some of us have received that wonderful infilling, and there's just such a wealth of information in God's Word about it, and I want to go there with you today. First John, and first of all, we'll go to St. John, chapter 14. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his departure, he said this, in verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. I want to look at that promise in detail and see what God said to his disciples there. Another means one beside, of the same kind. Another, in addition to me, that's just like me. He will do in my name and my absence, what I would do if I were there with you. Isn't that a beautiful definition of the Holy Spirit he was offering to them? What an amazing promise and what an amazing gift. When I read those words, I realize why I never feel alone. He lives in me and he's promised to abide with me forever. In my loneliest time, when Ken left me to go to heaven 21 years ago this week. 
Jesus sent his presence to me the morning after by his Holy Spirit, and he gave me an enormous peace that has never left me. And for 15 years, I lived alone, but I was never alone until God sent the wonderful gift of my sister to share life and ministry with me. The disciples were wondering that day how they were going to make it without Jesus. He was getting ready to leave them, and what would this mean for them? He had been with them for three and a half years. And Jesus said, you won't have to be alone. I will be there with you, and I will be in you by my Holy Spirit. Oh, dearest ones, what a marvelous gift he has given to us. Let's look at that gift more closely. He is a distinct person of God. He comes alongside the Father and the Son, and it is through him that much of his work is accomplished on earth. You and I were designed by God to live in his presence by the Holy Spirit. And without his help, we are doomed to fail in every important area of life. The truth is, that sin not only separated us from God, but it contaminated us. So until the death and resurrection of Jesus that came to cleanse us from sin, the Holy Spirit could not dwell in us. But once we receive him, he comes and lives in us. Amen. We marvel that he would be willing to die on the cross and redeem us and make us presentable as a tabernacle for God's spirit. John the Baptist, a prophet sent by God, introduced Jesus to the world and declared four essential truths about him. Number one, he is the Lamb of God that came to take away the sin of the world. Number two, he is the pre-existent one who came to us from eternity. Number three, he is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. And number four, he is the divine begotten Son of God. Can you say amen? amen? We have read of his great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was promised by the prophets that came on the day of Pentecost and is still available to every believer who repents and believes in Jesus Christ. We read that the Holy Spirit is given without measure to every believer. But there must be a human response to that gift. And then that's where you and I come in. When believers want him to dwell in him, they must welcome his presence in their lives and be willing to step out in faith so that his power and gifts can be released. The Holy Spirit wants us to surrender our tongue to him so that he can release our spirit to praise and pray in a language that we don't understand. Now let's look at the changes that will take place inside of us and how these changes will impact our future. The gospel, when it's received and believed, produces a deep internal miracle in the heart. The prophet Ezekiel described it this way in chapter 36 and verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Bible does not teach unsafe people to become better people. It doesn't force the rebellious and selfish and independent ones to try harder to be good. He does an unlimited change in our life. His unlimited grace is to those whose heart of stone has been replaced with a heart of flesh. Amen. To those who are the children of God and love him and want to serve him. God's amazing grace enables us to put to death the deeds of the flesh, as Romans 8.13 tells us. Salvation is such an amazing gift. When we repent and believe in Jesus, our sins are completely washed away. They are gone. They are remembered no more. And there is no record of them. Think of it. A clean slate. Secondly, everyone born from above with a desire to please God in John 3.3 3, will not want to keep on sinning. Ezekiel 36, 27 says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. These words describe the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which would be given when the Messiah came and brought God's kingdom to earth. In Luke 24, 49, Jesus told his disciples that it was the promise of the Father 
That is how God enables his people to obey his word and to worship him as he desires to be worshipped and live and enjoy the many blessings he wants to give us. In the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 24, Paul said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body that is full of death? Paul knew that without the Holy Spirit, the power of temptation would be too strong to keep him from sinning. But Paul does not leave believers hanging there. He reminds us in Romans 8, 1, that those who are in Christ Jesus do not live under condemnation, even when the power of the flesh overwhelms them. And he points to the indwelling Holy Spirit and reminds us of how powerful he is over our flesh. In verse 11, he describes the Holy Spirit as the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. And that's a powerful spirit, amen? Yeah. Paul wants us to know that the Holy Spirit inside us is far more powerful than any sinful desire. And as we learn to let him strengthen us and put to death the deeds of our flesh, he makes major changes in our life. He makes of us literally a new person. We have been forgiven of all of our past and we live in continuous grace. We have a new heart who loves God and wants to obey him. And we are indwelt by a power far greater than the power of any temptation. And we are set free, never to go back to the old life, set apart to serve him with all of the gifts that he wants to give to us. Aren't we a blessed people? The new you will make you drastically different. You will make choices now that are right and in line with God's will. And as a result, your life will be dramatically changed. Your life will have a sense of purpose. You will sense his presence throughout the day and his love and care for you in everything you do. You are becoming the person God designed you to be in your mother's womb. You are grateful to be alive because each day is another opportunity to partner with God in the building of his kingdom. God's plan for his children is that they live victorious, fruitful lives. Jesus promised us that he would help us, and Ezekiel prophesied that it would be true. We have goals, and with his help, we have the power to reach them. When people talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they usually are talking about speaking in tongues and giving, having power to witness. And that is true. It does release the wonderful gifts of ministry, but equally important and often overlooked is that the Holy Spirit will provide us with the power to obey God and live a holy life. Amen? Amen? And when we learn to pray and worship in the Holy Spirit, we become strengthened and we're able to put to death the deeds of the flesh, to make good choices, to walk in faith, and to endure to the end. Today, I want us to recognize the new things that God has placed in our lives and I want to confess with our mouths the foundational truths that we have learned. Would you stand with me for a moment and repeat after me? First, I am forgiven. That's I am forgiven. forgiven. My spirit is no longer separated from God by sin. My spirit is no longer separated from God by sin. He is my loving Father. He is my loving Father. And because I have been joined to Jesus, and because I have been joined to Jesus, I have been given every good gift. I have been given every good gift. Second, I have a new heart. I have a new heart. I now truly love God, and I want to please Him. I want to please Him. Rebellion has been replaced by trust. Rebellion has been replaced by trust. Selfishness has been replaced by a longing to help others. Selfishness has been replaced by a longing to help others. My independence has been replaced by a hunger. My independence has been replaced by a For the joy that I feel when I'm in his presence. My body is no longer unclean. My body is no longer unclean. It has become a dwelling place. It has become a dwelling for the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit. And He has awakened my human spirit. And He has awakened my human spirit. So that I can hear, see, and feel. 
so that I can hear, see, and feel the spiritual realities I never understood before. I have learned that by the Holy Spirit, I can pray and praise until I become strong. And then I can do whatever he wants me to do. Amen? and has welcomed the baptism of the Holy Spirit, each of those statements is absolutely true. And if we choose to believe what God has said and live in these truths, we will find a new source of power that is so strong, it will change the course of our lives and guide us into the blessings that God has planned for us. I don't want to miss one of them, do you? We will become, as David wrote in Psalm 1-3, like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth good fruit in its season. Its leaf also will not wither, and whatsoever he does will prosper. I want to be that, have that said about my life, don't you? I want people to know that I've been with Jesus when I talk with them. I want to live in the joy of knowing the Holy Spirit's life-giving power, guiding me in everything I say and do. I want to look more like Jesus every day of my life, don't you? Yes. And at the end of my life, I want to hear him say, say it with me, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And that's what he has for each of us. That's his desire for us, dear ones. Next week, Lord willing, we will learn more about walking in the Spirit and the marvelous provision that God has made this wonderful gift that he has made available to us. If you haven't received the baptism in the Holy Spirit yet, don't be discouraged. Live in his presence daily and in your private and public times of prayer, ask him for that gift. I want you to know that he will not disappoint you. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this precious time you've given us in your word, for the truth, Lord, and the wonder of the baptism and the Holy Spirit that you have promised to us, the promise of the Father, the promise that you would never leave us alone, Lord, that we would be there and we would be there with you and you would prepare us for life here on earth and life in eternity with you. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for that marvelous gift. And Father, as we continue to worship and rejoice in your love, I pray that you will meet every need present. And that the words we confessed and spoke today in your presence will be alive and living in every heart. And for that one who has never received Jesus, I come with you now. Pray this prayer with me. If you have never received the Lord, this is your moment to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior to come into my heart and forgive my sin. And I invite you to do that. Come and live in me by that Holy Spirit that will enable me to live for you. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And now let's join the worship team as they sing, Oh, How He Loves Us. Sometimes I think of why. Why, Jesus, do you give us these gifts? Why do you care about what we do? Why do you even think of us? He created everything for his pleasure. There's so much more. But he loves us. He loves you and me.
yourself and say this with me. Oh, how he loves me. Sometimes we say, oh, how he loves us. And I want you to realize today how much he loves you. How much he loves you. Thank you, worship team. That was, that was beautiful. And thank you all for joining us today for your love and your prayers and your faithful support. We're so grateful to you. Remember our services Monday night is prayer night. You with your family in your home and us with our family in our home. This Tuesday is the day that our ladies have been waiting for. We're having in-person ladies meeting this Tuesday at 1030. And it will be in this room instead of downstairs. And Ruth will explain other details when you come. We're so looking forward to being with all of you and sharing a Bible study in person. So that will be Tuesday at 10.30. On Wednesday night at 7 is our live stream, and we invite you to join us for that. On Fridays at 10, we have food distribution for our community. You're invited to come. And our youth and young adults meet at 7 o'clock. If you have those young people in your home or your life, we invite you to come and be with us. On Saturday, we again have a time of offering food to our community. And then next Sunday, again, a live stream at 1030, where we have a time of praise and worship and ministry of the word. God bless you. And this week, will you live in the knowledge of knowing that spirit that lives within you is the presence of Jesus and allow him to breathe life in everything you do as you share his love with others. Amen? Amen. God bless you and be encouraged. Thank you for coming.